everyone. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about something that was very important in forming my interest in science fiction and fantasy and getting into more creative outlets, and that would be Dungeons and & Dragons. And it's kind of a hard thing to explain to someone who really has no idea what D&D is, because there's nothing else really like it besides other role-playing games of that type. Um, because there's no actual, it's not like a set game, there is no set move these pieces, come to a final goal, there is no set story, there is nothing else to really compare it to, because really what Dungeons and Dragons is, is just a set of rules. No matter what edition you get into, that's really all it is. It's a bunch of books with a bunch of rules about how to deal, how to create statistics for a character, um, what you have to roll in certain situations, for instance, getting over a trap, making like a strength check or a dexterity check, or you know, rolling your you know, saving throws, and it's really all it is, is just a set of rules, and then you go and create your own game, your own fantasy realm, your own whatever, and you can buy plenty of pre-made scenarios. That's where a lot of things like the uh, Baldur's Gate series, that start off as an extension of the, in the Forgotten Realms world for Dungeons & Dragons. You have the Dragonlance, the world of Kryn, uh, that start off as basically a Dungeons & Dragons campaign. A lot of these things, um, even sort of similar sort of spin-off role-playing games like uh, Ravenloft, which is more of a horror-themed D&D type style game. You get into a bunch of other things like that. Um, that's, that's what it is. You create your own world, your own content. It's based entirely on your imagination. The closest thing I could probably relate it to would be, if you remember in the late 80s, early 90s, those Choose your own adventure books. Think of the person who is in charge of your D&D campaign, the, your, the dungeon master and then the other people playing, as the person who writes that choose your own adventure book and you go through and instead of having you know two or three choices, there aren't really choices, you have limitless choices. You are going through an adventure and your team is working together and using you, your imaginations to come up with this world and this new creativity and the DM basically presents a scenario to you and you make those choices and the DM then sort of creates the story as he goes even if you have like a very very set story depending on what the people you're playing with you know what they come up with he could have to on the fly very much change what the story is and how you're going because you never know it's part of the fun of D&D is you never know what people are going to come up with and that's really the whole thing about Dungeons and Dragons is it's all about the people you're playing with. It's not about what you're playing. As much as the story matters and how creative and talented your dungeon master is matters, you're gonna have you could have a terrible game if you don't have people that are really, really into it. It doesn't matter how good the story is. And the other way around, you could have a fairly poorly written game, but have some really good creative players that come up with some just hilarious content. You spend more time you know, goofing off and just like screaming at each other and just absolutely hilarious scenarios, just working with friends. And it's something that, maybe not Dungeons and Dragons specifically, but that form of gaming, any kind of sort of very free tabletop gaming, I think is something that could be very important in actually in the development of an imagination and learning teamwork and learning just creative solutions to problems is something that I definitely feel was actually beneficial to me, not necessarily just in the form of getting into certain types of fiction or storytelling, but something that actually helped me in real life. I mean, there are many situations in that I've used in Dungeons & Dragons playing uh, back when I was in elementary school with uh, Keith Parkinson and his son Zach in our campaign. Eventually we had our friend Rich got in, uh, a couple other people um, that really have helped me out in other areas of my life, just learning those skills at an early age. Here are some examples of miniatures that I pulled out of my closet here. It's just sort of a very small basic set. I haven't used these in many years for a bunch of different things. So if you're really into D&D, you probably recognize these uh, blue ones here from the old starter campaign. This is something that sort of was a teach you how to play Dungeons & Dragons. It had a, a very a set story, a set scenario with set characters that was more of a tutorial type guide that just lasted a few hours, a short campaign. Uh, and this one here, this I've had for many years. This was, I was maybe eight or nine years old when I got this from uh, Keith Parkinson. I used him 
for my very first D&D character, and I actually had that character for maybe five or six years while we were playing. I had this same guy. Um, it was a ranger uh, named Wolfgang, and yeah, my friend Zach, Keith's son, always used to make fun of me because he always used to refer to him as uh, Wolfgang Candy or Wolfgang Cup Puck and all these different things. Uh, so this is just sort of a basic idea of Dungeons and Dragons you would have really just um, a mat, basically a gridded mat, and maybe a few little things to use for scenery, and overall you would just have sort of a representation of your characters or any people you're interacting with or you know monsters that you're fighting, whatever. It just that's You could uh, leave these in their original pewter. There's lots of painted ones here. Here's a cool, pretty cool painted one. Just a bunch of different ones. I mean, there are thousands upon thousands of these, official and non-official. And then moving over here, pulled this out of my closet as well. This is just an example of a good old dice bag and the type of dice that you would use. You know, you know, D, D8s, D12, D4s, D100s. I don't want the big D100s anymore. The one that actually goes from like 0 to 100 has 100, or 1 to 100 has 100 sides. An old D4. And just the different types of die that you would use while you're playing the game depending on what you're doing. And yeah, that's about all I wanted to say today on that. Uh, I would love to get a group of people together and maybe do sort of a very short, little, like, couple hour long campaign to show you guys who really don't know much about Dungeons & Dragons or have incorrect, you know, preconceived notions about it, what it actually is, you know, what's involved in it, as it is, you know, like I said, it's a very hard thing to explain because it's something that's very unique and it's not really anything that's set in stone. It's just a set of rules that you don't even always have to follow. In fact, I... My favorite thing is to actually play first edition um, AD&D. Um, not regular Dungeons and Dragons, but Advanced Dungeons and Dragons first edition. And just sort of take the, that basic uh, rule set and tweak it to whatever I want to use for my campaign. And sometimes create our own like, races or classes. And you can really do whatever you want. It's all about just having fun, using your imagination. And it's all about the people that you play with more than what you're playing. Feel free to let me know about any of your experiences with Dungeons & Dragons or similar games below.